The idea behind it is that traditional thumb technique, if you look at a bass player like Larry Graham, he used to do thumb stuff with his bass turned up and the treble turned up. And his attack was literally just sending the thumb down onto the string and bouncing it back off. So you should see. So very much this kind of movement. Um, and Victor's idea with it was, if we can use the thumb kind of like a plectrum, we could do a downstroke and then an upstroke. And that would allow me to play slap stuff a lot faster. The main problem people have with it is that they still use that bounce off technique, which means that your hand, and for slap in general, a lot of guys use far too much movement with it. Ideally, you want your thumb to move as little as possible, so even if I was playing really, from a really straightforward groove thing. Fast lead stuff. You still want to have it where there's a very small amount of movement happening in this hand. The biggest problem, like people watch Flea. Flea has a lot to answer for. People watch Flea and he's kind of doing this. Thing, blah, 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 and then they go, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to play like. And it only works for flea type bass lines, and, and he does it. Um, I saw Billy Sheen say the same thing. He was playing um, the solo from Shy Boy, the, the one where he plays all the tap stuff with both hands, and he said, I could just play it like this. And he just played it with one hand all the way up and down, and he went, doesn't look nearly as hard. <laughs> and the point was, he'd actually gone and found the way that looked much harder to play, you know, just because it looked cool. And the same thing, flea with the sort of vertical down face and thumb, because his bass is down here. So I see loads of students come in and they bring their bass and they go, why is it that whenever I slap the A string, the E string comes out as well? And I'm like, it's because a vertical thumb is obviously going to hit both strings at the same time. You watch someone like Marcus Miller play, or Mark King, and they're using the thumb perpendicular to the strings. So first things first, you need to make sure you have that sort of perpendicular approach. Beyond that, just take all of the regular things that you would practice musically, so say scales, arpeggios, patterns, all this sort of stuff, and apply the technique to it. One of the other big problems that occurs is that people think of a technique as a style. So slap bass has become you know, synonymous with funk, but that's not to say that you can't use it in other applications. Um, Fieldy from Korn, um, the bass player from Melvin Korn is a really good example of someone who uses slap technique in a metal band and it doesn't sound at all funky, it just sounds really aggressive. And he came to that obviously by thinking, well, a technique in itself is just a way of producing a sound. So if I slap in a metal band, I'm just getting a particular kind of sound. And if the way he does it actually it almost sounds like very aggressive plectrum playing. So as I say, the, the, the first main thing to get is the position of the thumb. And then the idea that whenever you do a downstroke, you basically go through the string and let your thumb rest on the next string along. So I'll slap through the E string and onto the A. The thumb will travel sort of through the string and come to rest on the string below. And then you simply send it back up in the other direction. So for things like that, I would take just C major scale. two, three, four, five notes of that and get it slow and controlled, the biggest problem you'll have is balancing the dynamics between the downstroke and the upstroke so you'll get this kind of and you want it to be more uniform. And then ultimately it's just about relaxing the hand. If any of you do play with a pick, once you get the idea of that motion in your head, you shouldn't be playing stuff with a plectrum, it should be nice and flexible. Once you get that idea with the thumb in, and then you can mix it up uh, with legato techniques. It's a technique I use very rarely. I kind of have it there for just such an occasion as this. Um, but I find, and the other problem with it is because Victor Wooten has 
so single-handedly kind of used that technique and, and brought it to the fore. It's really hard to use it without just sounding exactly like him. Um, for some people, sounding like Victor Wooten would be an incredible thing and they would love that idea and I dig that, but as musicians it's kind of cool to grab hold of things that are your own identity. So I steer clear of that one.